this is a single elimination bracket tournament. I will read each question uh, to the audience, and it, at the same time, it will be shown on the monitors on the screens for our mathletes. The contestants will have 45 seconds to answer the question. Uh, on their monitors, there will be a timer bar that will be counting down to show you how much time you have left to answer the question. Students must buzz in before answering. Uh, if you don't, you will not be recognized and your answer will not uh, count. Once you are called on by me after you buzz in, you will have three seconds to finish your answer. Uh, if you don't do that, again, uh, the answer will not be accepted. If you do not answer correctly, your opponent gets the remainder of the 45 seconds to continue working and to answer the question. Uh, we will start off with our rounds, uh, determining the winner by whoever gets the most out of five questions correct. Not necessarily three out of five, and whoever does that will move on to the next round. Good luck to each of you, and that means we are ready for our very first matchup which is our eighth and ninth place seeds. Can we please have our eighth seed, Holden Watson from Georgia, and our number nine seed, Jeremy Zhao from Texas. All right, Holden, we'll start with you. If you could please tell everyone uh, your school and what grade you're in. I go to Fulton Science Academy in Alpharetta, and I'm an eighth grader. Excellent. Now, Holden, this is your second time at Math Counts National Competition. When you guys are here, hopefully we do some really fun things with you guys. What did you think of Kennedy Space Center last night? I thought it was really interesting, and I felt like it really added to the trip. I love it. Love to hear that. And we're going to add even more because we uh, found out that there is actually a rocket launch from Kennedy going off tonight at 7.20. Uh, I am really excited. We have an awesome AV team here, and they have told me that we are going to be able to broadcast that rocket launch here during the banquet on the big screens. And, and, and I have a promise from Steve that he's going to turn the sound to 11. So it's going to feel like we're in the rocket when it's going off tonight. So hopefully that'll be a fun time for everybody. Uh, Holden, if you could test your buzzer, please. Excellent. Jeremy, if you could tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to Quail Valley Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, Jeremy is part of the Texas team uh, that won first place. This is their second year in a row winning uh, first place, so congratulations to you and your teammates. Um, you guys can clap for that. That's awesome, right? So, uh, you know, I've had the chance to talk to uh, you know, your coach and your coordinator, and, and they've told, uh, told me that you guys do a lot of interesting things to practice to get ready for your competitions. And uh, one of the things you guys do is that uh, to help motivate you to get answers right, when you guys make mistakes in practice, uh, you guys have to plank for 30 seconds after wrong answers. They actually sent pictures of this. I think we can show, I think we have the image somewhere. Uh, we have. Um, Where's my planking pictures of, of Jeremy and his teammates? Uh, there they are. There they are. They're, they're planking. <laughs> that's, that's Andrew. That's Jeremy back there. So here's my, the question I had from this. Who on your team can plank the longest right now? Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. OK. <laughs> so I'm going to take that as a positive, because it means you're really strong. Not that you get a lot of questions wrong during practice, right? <laughs> All right, Jeremy, if I could have you test your buzzer, please. All right, that means we are ready for the first question of our matchup. And our first question is, a square is drawn on the exterior of each side of a six inch by eight inch rectangle. The centers of those squares are then joined to form a quadrilateral. What is the area of that quadrilateral in square inches? Jeremy. 98. 98 is the correct answer. So Jeremy takes a 1-0 lead over Holden as we move to the second question of our matchup. And our second question is, Marla is on the student council. The council will select three members at random to run the can drive. There is a 50% chance that Marla will be chosen. How many students are on the council?
Holden. Six. Six is the correct answer. All right, Holden ties things up. The score is one to one as we move to question number three of our matchup. And our third question is, if n factorial squared divided by the quantity n plus one factorial times the quantity n minus one factorial, Jeremy. Seven. Seven is the correct answer. <laughs> Jeremy leads 2-1 as we move on to question number four of the matchup. And our question is, Clark and Jack share a cup of juice served in a paper cone. Clark drinks until the height of the liquid in the cone has decreased by one third. He gives the rest to Jack. What fraction of the juice did Clark drink? Express your answer as a common fraction. Jeremy. 19 over 27. 19 over 27 is the correct answer. So that means Jeremy has won our first matchup. Thank you, Holden. And that means it is time to bring up our next matchup, which is our number five seed, Reagan Choi from Michigan, against our number 12 seed, Andrew Wang from Pennsylvania. All right, so we're gonna start with Reagan. Reagan, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I'm in seventh grade and I go to Bowling Park Middle School. Excellent. Now, one of the things that we love at MathKins is we get to learn a lot about our math athletes over uh, the lead up to the national competition and we ask a lot of really uh, important questions of them uh, and we get some great answers. So one of the questions we asked this year was, uh, if you could pick your spirit animal, what would it be? Reagan uh, selected Pikachu Cat. And again, we have an image of Pikachu Cat. I think we have to show it. There it is, that's Pikachu Cat. That's adorable. Uh, can you tell us, did you pick it because you like cats or because you like Pikachu? Uh, because I like Pokemon. Awesome, very cool. Well, we love Pikachu Cat. Hopefully he'll, his spirit will be with you here today. Reagan, if you could test your buzzer, please. Excellent. All right, and Andrew, if you could tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to two different East Time Middle School and I'm in grade eight. Excellent. Now, Andrew, it says here that you actually are a twin? Yeah. Excellent, Is, or fraternal or identical? Fraternal. Fraternal, is your twin here? No, no. No, didn't get a chance to make it out. Well, what's interesting is that this year, Math Counts, we found out it's a real family affair. We actually have three sets of twins on our teams this year. Can the twins stand up? We have three of them. Where are our twins? I know New Mexico, there we go. I know we had a couple other ones. Really cool. So that's awesome, so that's awesome. Here's another really cool family thing. Talk about math counts in the family. I found this out the other night. Where's Nico Proskauer? Where is he from the Puerto Rico team? Where's Nico? Can he stand up? All right, there he is, Nico. So what's cool about Nico is that uh, Nico is the fourth child from his family to make it to the national competition. The four times, four, four children, they've made nine combined appearances at the national competition. This is their last year, so congratulations to the Proskauer family. Uh, that is really impressive. They've been a fixture here for so long, it'll be weird not having them at the competition. Uh, all right, moving back to the competition itself. Andrew, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Fantastic. That means we are ready for the first question of our matchup. And our first question is, what is the sum of the positive integers p for which the value of 13 over the quantity p squared minus 3 is a positive integer? Andrew. Five. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Reagan. Six. Six is the correct answer. Reagan takes a one to nothing lead over Andrew as we move on to question number two in our matchup. And our second question is, the number 97,336 is the cube of which integer? Andrew. 46. 46 is the correct answer. <laughs> 
So tie score one to one as we head to question number three of our matchup. And our third question is, if X is a positive number such that the quantity X squared plus two, oh. Andrew. Five. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Uh, the quantity X squared plus two X plus one over the quantity X squared plus six S plus nine equals 36 over 49. What is the value of X? Ten seconds. Reagan. Eleven. Eleven is the correct answer. So Reagan leads two to one as we move to question number four of our matchup. And our question is, how many ordered triples of positive integers A, B, C satisfy the quantity A to the B raised to the C equals four? Reagan. Three. Three is the correct answer, which means that Reagan has won this matchup. Congratulations, Reagan. Thank you, Andrew. You can return to your seats, and we will bring up our next matchup, which is our number six seed, Alex Zhu from Michigan, against our number 11 seed, Kevin Lee from California. Okay, Alex, we are going to start with you. Alex, if you could test, uh, excuse me, tell us uh, which school you go to and what grade you're in. Um, I, I go to Paul Park Middle School, which is the same as Reagan, but I, I'm in eighth grade. Eighth grade, excellent. So, Alex, this is your third time here. Congratulations. That's a really hard accomplishment. Make it back three times to the national competition. Now, someone uh, with that level of success, let me ask you, what grade were you in when you started math contests? Um, I don't know exactly. Probably the start of sixth grade. Sixth grade? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, you know, certainly sixth grade, then you got right into it. I think what's great is that uh, for, for students who want to start a little earlier, really excited that there are a lot of great new resources and, and opportunities that have come out in recent years for, for students who want to maybe get an earlier start. Uh, really excited. Where's the art of problem solving, guys? There they are down there. Uh, great program. For those who want to get on stage three times like Alex, I think their new program, Beast Academy, oh, some of you guys have seen that. Really cool stuff uh, for, the, for the younger grades, working up to math, working up. And you guys, I know you all love the art of problem solving. Great program. Real excited about another one. Where's Scott? Scott Flansburg, you guys might know him, the human calculator, he's here today. Scott has uh, a program that they're starting uh, to see who can uh, beat his counting records uh, for students in kindergarten through sixth grade. Uh, called the Counting Bee, National Competition, National Counting Bee, that's starting in 2018. So really cool stuff. Uh, and hey, you know, we'll have those kids coming up here someday. So hopefully they can be like Alex. Alex, I could have you test your buzzer, please. Very good, thank you. All right, Kevin, if we could have you introduce yourself, tell us what school you go to and what grade you're in. Uh, I go to Pleasanton Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, in our last matchup, we heard from Reagan that his spirit animal was Pikachu Cat. We asked uh, Kevin the same question. <laughs> he told us his spirit animal uh, would be a tiny hamster eating a tiny burrito. Do we, do we have the, the tiny hamster video? There he is, look at him. That's awesome. And he said that he did that because you're a big fan of Chipotle, right? Yeah. So if you, we had an eating contest between you and this guy, who do you think would win? Uh, probably me. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Love the confidence. <laughs> Kevin, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Excellent. All right, then we are ready to start our matchup with our first question. And that first question is, Ruby has four shirts and three hats. The four shirts are red, blue, green, and yellow. Alex. Um, one over four. One over four is the correct answer. <laughs> Alex takes a one nothing lead over Kevin as we move to the second question in our matchup. And our second question is, the equation, the quantity 2a minus 2017 squared equals k, where k is a real number, has two distinct positive integer solutions for 
Alex. Um, 289. 289 is the correct answer. <laughs> Alex takes a 2-0 lead over Kevin as we move to question number three in our matchup. And our third question is, in the figure, the measure of minor arc AB is 100. Kevin. Uh, 80. 80 is the correct answer. So Kevin gets on the board. The score is two to one as we move to question number four of our matchup. And our fourth question is, how many ways are there to make 33 cents using any combination of pennies, nickels, and dimes? Kevin. Four. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Alex. I'm um, 16. 16 is the correct answer, which means that Alex has won the matchup. Thank you, Kevin. And this means we are ready for our next matchup, which is our number 10 seed, Jack Albright from California, against our number 7 seed, Brian Liu from New Jersey. Come on over, guys. All right, Jack, we will start with you. If you could tell us what school you go to and what grade you're in. I go to the Nueva School, and I am in seventh grade. Great. Now, Jack, I got to say, I'm very excited to uh, be meeting up here because uh, I loved your survey response uh, answers. Because like me, you are a big fan of puns. He had a lot of puns on his survey answers. I'll give you an example. This one was my favorite. So we asked them, uh, what fashion trend that's gone away would you like to see come back in style? And you put powdered wigs. <laughs> Sorry, I find this hilarious. He put powdered wigs, because if they did, there would be hell to pay. Right? <laughs> hell to pay. That's, that's great. <laughs> I'm, a big, I'm a big fan. I got to ask, are you going to come up with any puns during the countdown round? All right. I guess they're probably. Well, that's, that's I good. Mean, I mean, in a test with numbers, I'm sure there's an uncomfortable number of puns, but I think that number of puns that can be made in the, in the ordinal set of number of, of questions is finite. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Now, you know, when you're doing your answers, try not to use puns, because if you did, that would make you a weapon of math distraction. <laughs> right? <laughs> I wanted to make them laugh. That was my goal with the pun, so I, I hope I got there. Jack, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Love it. All right, and Brian, if we could have you uh, tell us what school you go to and what grade you're in. I go to William R. Sack School, and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, uh, for those of you who were here last year, you might remember Brian uh, made it up on stage, and, and we actually made history here. We actually started a club on stage. For those of you who weren't here, we actually have video, so everybody knows what we're talking about, if we could show, that, uh, show the video. Now, Brian, um, you know, when I was reading about your bio information here, you and I actually have a lot in common. I bet you didn't know that, but, you know, we both participated in Math Counts. Um, we're both from New Jersey, both named Lou, Right? We're both good looking guys. I think me and you should start a club for guys like us and call it Lou Jersey. What do you think? Are you in? Are you in? All right. So, you know, I saw Brian yesterday at the written competition and I realized we made a mistake uh, on your registration form that your name badge was wrong. It had the wrong state on it. It said New Jersey. I want you to know I fixed that. We have it right here. Here's, here's, I don't know if we can get a close up of that here, right? There it is, Lou Jersey, right? Co founder. Here's mine, right? So I have one too, Lou Jersey. I want to get you your right badge. So here you go. You can put that right here. You can bring that. All right, Brian, my friend from Lou Jersey, if I could have you test your buzzer, please. Very good. 
That means we are ready for the first question of our matchup. And our first question is, what is the least positive integer A for what? Brian. 14. 14 is the correct answer. Brian takes a one nothing lead over Jack as we head to the second question of our matchup. And our second question is, in Zagland, people measure length in two units, zigs and zags. A length of x zigs is equal to a length of the quantity x plus three zags, and a length of the quantity three x plus seven zigs is equal to a length of the quantity three x plus 22 zags. What is the value of x? Express your answer as a common fraction. Brian. Negative three halves. Sorry, that's not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Jack. Five over two. I'm sorry, that is oh. not correct. Uh, the answer is seven over two. <laughs> seven over two. So the score remains one for Brian, zero for Jack. As we head to the third question in our matchup, and our third question is the sum of eleven consecutive. In Brian. Negative five. Wait. Sorry, that is not the correct answer. The sum of 11 consecutive integers, Jack. Negative four. Negative four <laughs> is the correct answer. So the score is tied one to one as we head to question number four of our matchup. And our fourth question is, how many different amounts can be obtained by using one or more coins in a collection of one quarter, one dime, two nickels, and four pennies? Jack. 46. I'm sorry, that's not the correct mm. answer. Mm. Brian. 256. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. The answer is 49. 49 amounts. So uh, that means we are still tied as we head to question number five of the matchup. And our fifth question is, for positive integer b, a line of slope 2 and a line of slope negative 8 intersect at 0b. The x-intercepts of the two lines are 30 units apart. What is the value of b? Brian. 300. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Jack. 48. 48 is the correct answer. Which means Jack has won our matchup. Thank you, Brian. And that means our first round is complete. Uh, we will now move on to our quarterfinals, where the winners in the first round will compete against the top four seeds that had a bye in the previous round. The rules for this round are the same as the first. And the first pair of students to compete will be the number one seed, Luke Robitaille from Texas, against the number nine seed, Jeremy Zhao from Texas. Okay, Luke, since we haven't seen you yet, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I'm homeschooled and I'm in seventh grade. Excellent. And Luke, it's great to see you back again. Uh, we all know Luke has really impressive number skills. Uh, last year as a sixth grader, you came in second in both the written and the countdown round. This year you came in first uh, in uh, the written competition, so that's really impressive. Uh, but I understand you have a good story about how those number skills came into real practical use last year. I'd love to hear that story. So last year, so last year we all got our wind jackets, windbreakers, and so my mother and I went to see the White House in Washington, D.C. We took a taxi, and when I got out of the taxi, I realized, oh no, I forgot my wind jacket. But I remember the number of the taxi, so we got it back. <laughs> That's awesome that you remembered it. Now here's the really impressive thing. 
Do you still remember the number of the taxi? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could have made one up and we would have been like, wow, he probably does still remember it. So, <laughs> but I appreciate your honesty, so that's good. Uh, Luke, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Great, you work. And Jeremy, if you could test your buzzer, please. Excellent, so we are all set. And that means we are ready for the first question of our matchup. And our first question is, what is the least positive integer that is not the difference of two primes? Luke. Seven. Seven is the correct answer. All right, Luke takes a one nothing lead over Jeremy as we head to the second question of our matchup. And our second question is, the nine-pointed star shown has nine lines of reflective symmetry each through its center and has an angle of measure 56 degrees at the tip of its points. What is the degree measure of the obtuse angle on the exterior of the star between two of the points? Luke. 132. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of sick. Okay. 10 seconds. Jeremy. 124. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. The answer is 96. Okay. I'm 96 gonna... degrees. Score remains one nothing. Luke in the lead as we go to question number three of our matchup. And our third question is, how many positive integers less than, Luke? Four. Four is the correct answer. So Luke has a two nothing lead over Jeremy as we head to question number four of our matchup. And our fourth question is, for what value of x is the square root of three times three times nine cubed times 27 to the fourth equal to the quantity three times the square root of three, Luke. 13. 13 is the correct answer. And Luke wins the matchup. All right, that means we are ready for our next pairing, which is our number four seed, William Wong from New Jersey, against our number five seed, Reagan Choi from Michigan. Come on over. So William, we haven't seen you yet. If you could please tell us what school you go to and what grade you're in. I'm from Community Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. William had some great answers on his questions as well and the one that I really liked was, uh, if you could make up a word that is not in the English language, you came up with a really good one uh, to d be defined as someone who participated in math counts. And what was the word you came up with? I forget, I okay. got that survey for fun. <laughs> I'll remind you then, it was math counter, right? Isn't that a great word, math counter? It, it's almost a punny, so Jack might you know, think of something more clever with that, but I, I, love, I love the term, and I think it's great because you know, math counts, we uh, love our alumni. Uh, we have some really uh, amazing folks. Speaking of alumni, we have our 2015 champ right down there, Kevin. So there's one really impressive alumni. Glad that he's back here to, to be recognized doing great things. Also really excited that we have uh, tonight uh, this year's uh, Math Counts Alumni Scholarship winner, Kaylee DeSoto. She's right there. Really great story about Kaylee. Really impressive, doing good things. Did Math Counts. Uh, then uh, her middle school, actually their team dissolved and she went back and started the program as a coach and is doing great things there. So really impactful stories. So thanks, thank you to you alumni and, and we look forward to hearing what you guys come up with when you become Math Counters. Uh, all right, William, if I could have you test your buzzer. Great, you're all set. And Reagan, if I could have you test yours. Excellent. Then we are ready to go with the first question of our matchup. And our first question is, right triangle PQR has vertices at P24, Q00, and R-21. What is the product of the slopes of the two? William. Negative one. Negative one is the correct answer. <laughs> William takes a one nothing lead as we move on to the second question of our matchup. And our second question is, if one plus one half plus one half squared plus one half cubed 
and so on through one half to the 2017 equals two to the A minus one over two to the B. Reagan. 4,032. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Uh, what is the value of A plus B? William. 4,035. 4,035 is the correct answer. <laughs> William takes a 2-0 lead over Reagan as we move on to question number three in our matchup. And our third question is, how many non-negative integer solutions A, B, C, X, Y, and Z with all six integers less than or equal to four does the equation the quantity A minus X squared plus the quantity B minus Y squared plus the quantity C minus Z squared equals one half? William. 576. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Reagan. 600. 600 is the correct answer. All right. So Reagan gets on the board. William still leads two to one as we move on to question number four of the round. And our fourth question is, what is the value of it? William. Four. Four is the correct answer. Which means William has won this matchup. That means we are ready for the next pairing, which is our number three seed, Andrew Kai from Texas, against our number six seed, Alex Yu from Michigan. Come on over. All right, Andrew, if we could have you tell everyone what school you go to and what grade you were in. I'm in seventh grade, I go to Quo Valley Middle School. Excellent. Now, it's great to see you. Andrew participated uh, and was in the countdown round last year. And uh, I actually saw you a few months ago at a, an exhibition Math Counts event. It was really cool. It took place at the big South by Southwest conference. Uh, Andrew, could you tell everyone uh, what that event was about and what, what happened there? So it was about gaining a sponsorship. So it was a countdown match against, with eight people and also eight, like, eight adults joining them in, in pairs of two, so one adult and one kid. So it was basically regular countdown except another, except one extra rule. We couldn't buzz until the question was over. So it was just an interesting event with a great reward, like a computer and an Oculus Rift, which was, I haven't used it yet, but I will after Math Counts Nationals. <laughs> So a lot of cool stuff there. So, yeah, uh, so a couple things. First, yes, we, uh, the adults who were in the competition were actually members of Congress and CEOs were paired up with mathletes uh, like Andrew. Um, two, in order to give them a chance to read the questions, we told the mathletes they couldn't buzz in halfway through the question, which I'm sure was incredibly frustrating for them. So thank you guys for, uh, for being cool about that. Um, and yeah, it was a great way to, to, to raise awareness for what we do at Math Counts and of course very excited that the winner, uh, Andrew, was on the winning pair and they did get an Oculus Rift. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get virtual reality into this because I really want one of those Oculus Rifts um, and I could not be in the contest because I would lose if you were in it. But uh, let me ask you this, someday hopefully we'll do that event in the future and if you came back as an adult, do you think it'd be more likely you'd come back as a member of Congress or as a CEO to be paired up with a mathlete? Probably a CEO. Awesome. <laughs> I think that's great. I think that's great. I think we could use you in Congress too, so maybe you can be both. You can help us all out. We need more mathletes there. Uh, okay, Andrew, if I could have you test your buzzer. Excellent, you're great. Alex, if I could have you test yours. Perfect. We are ready to start our matchup. And the first question of our matchup is, what is the value of one third times the quantity, the quantity one half, Alex? 13 over 36. 13 over 36 is the correct answer. <laughs> Alex takes a one nothing lead over Andrew. 
as we move to question number two in our matchup. And the second question is, the product of the least common multiple and the greatest common factor of 36 and M. Alex. Um, 72. Time. I'm sorry, that is oh. not the correct answer. The product of the least common multiple and the greatest common factor of 36 and M is 1,728. What is the value of M? Andrew. 48. 48 is the correct answer. All right, scores tied one to one as we move to question number three in our matchup. And our third question is, a state initially issued license plates in just one format, two letters followed by four digits. Later, additional formats were introduced in which the two letters could appear in any positions. How many additional formats were introduced? Alex. Three million and two hundred thirty thousand. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Wait. Oh. Wow. Andrew. Nine four six four zero 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 zero. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. The answer is 14. What? <laughs> so, uh, guys are a little off on that one, but that's all right. Whoops. That's okay. Whoops. It's all right, it happens. Um, the good news is, still a tie game. So, one to one, as we move on to question number four of our matchup. And our fourth question is, if X and Y are positive numbers, such that 1.5x equals y, and 1.5 is the error. Alex. 1.8. 1 1.8 is the correct answer. Which means Alex has a 2-1 lead over Andrew as we move on to question number five in our matchup. And our fifth question is, what value of x? Andrew. 16. 16 is the correct answer. And that means that we have a tie score after five questions, which means we move to a sudden victory situation. And that means the next correct answer will win the round. You guys clear with that? Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, then that means we are ready to go on to the first question of sudden victory. And the question is, for what percent of real number values of x between zero and Alex? 2%. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. For what percent of real number values of x between 0 and 100 is x squared minus 11x plus 28 less than 0? Andrew. 3. 3 is the correct answer. Which means Andrew moves on. And that means we are ready for our next pairing, which is our number 10 seed, Jack Albright from California, against our number two seed, Jeffrey Wu from Illinois. All right, so uh, Jeffrey, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to Kennedy Junior High School and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, Jeffrey, this is your second year at Math Counts Nationals. Now, I think what's really awesome about Jeffrey's story is, you know, we, we've seen some students uh, on stage today uh, who were also on stage last year, and that's really great when we have students repeat in the countdown round. Uh, Jeffrey participated last year, and he actually, last year, uh, first time here, fell outside of the top 25% of scorers. And this year, worked hard, real success story, and ended up becoming the number two score yesterday on, on the test in the rank competition. So I think that's a really awesome story. Really impressive jump. So Jeffrey, uh, let, me, let me ask this. For students who are in the audience or who are at home and they want to make that big jump like you did, what advice might you have for someone? Uh, I think that uh, a lot of practice helps. Yeah, I think that's right. 
I'll give one more piece of advice. Have dinner at the Proskauer household because they keep churning out math eats left and right. There's something in the water down there. So combined, I think that's a recipe for success. <laughs> Jeffrey, if I could have you test your buzzer, please. Excellent. All right, Jack, if I could have you test your buzzer. Great, that means we are ready to begin. And we will start with the first question of our matchup. And the question is, using the digits one, three, and five, Jeffrey. Three. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Using the digits one, three, and five, Jack. Four. Four is the correct answer. Jack takes a one nothing lead over Jeffrey as we move on to question number two in our matchup. And our second question is, if X is a positive number and M and N are positive integers such that the M root of X times the N root of X equals the MN root of X to the 15th and the M root of X over the N root of X equals the MN root of X cubed, what is the value of M? Jack. Six. Six is the correct answer. So Jack leads 2-0 as we head to question number three in our matchup. And our third question is, a two-digit positive integer P has the same digit in the units and tens places and is divisible by, Jeffrey. 66. 66 is the correct answer. So the score is two to one. Jack is still in the lead as we go to question number four in the round. And our fourth question is, the sum of the first 15 odd positive integers is equal to the sum of the cubes of the first, Jack. Five. Five is the correct answer, which means that Jack has won the matchup. And that also means we have now reached the semifinals with only four students remaining with the chance to become the national champion. For the rest of the competition, our rules will change slightly. From this point on, in order to win a round, our mathletes will have to answer four questions correctly. And that means we are ready for our first semifinal pairing, which is our number one seed, Luke Robitaille from Texas, against our number four seed, William Wong from New Jersey. Since you guys have both been up here, you guys know the drill. Luke, if I could have you test your buzzer, please. Perfect. William, if you could test yours. Great. That means we are ready to move on to the questions. And the first question of the matchup is, if f of x equals the absolute value of the, Luke. Two. Two is the correct answer. <laughs> Luke takes a one nothing lead over William. As we move to the next question in our matchup, and the question is, what is the greatest value of Luke? One. One is the correct answer. <laughs> Luke takes a two nothing lead over William. As we move on to the third question of our round, and our third question is, if the mean of an odd number of consecutive integers is Luke? Zero. Zero is the correct answer. Luke has a three nothing lead over William. As we move on to the next question, and our next question is, what is the value of the expression, the quantity 97 factorial plus 98 factorial over the quantity 98 factorial plus 99 factorial? William. 99 over 197. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Express your answer as a common fraction. Luke. 99 over 9,800. 99 over 9,800 is the correct answer. All right. And now we are moving to our second semifinal pairing, which is our number 10 seed, Jack Albright from California, against our number three seed, Andrew Kai from Texas. Come on over. 
All right. All right, so Jack, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Excellent. Andrew, we could have you test yours. Great. That means we're ready to go. And the first question of our matchup is, Ricardo takes the product of the middle two numbers of four consecutive integers and subtracts the product of the first and last numbers. What number does he get? Andrew. Two. Two is the correct answer. All right, Andrew has a one nothing lead as we move on to the next question of our matchup. And our next question is, some cubicle boxes, each with edges of length two feet, are stacked in the corner of a warehouse. The boxes are stacked in three layers as shown in the figure. What is the total exposed surface area of all of the boxes? In Andrew. 44. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. What is the total exposed surface area of all of the boxes in square feet? Jack. 116. Time. 116 is the correct answer. All right, Jack ties things up one to one as we move on to the next question. And that question is, if a kite has two six centimeter sides and two 10 centimeter sides, what is the greatest possible area in square centimeters? Jack. 48. Sorry, that's not the correct answer. Andrew. 60. 60 is the correct answer. All right, Andrew is ahead two to one. As we move on to the next question of our matchup, and our next question is, a finite geometric sequence of real numbers with more than five terms has one as both its first and last terms. If the common multiplier is not one, what is the value of the fourth term? Jack. Negative one. Negative one is the correct answer. All right, score is two to two as we move on to the next question of the round. And our next question is, what is the value of the square root of the quantity one plus two times the square root of the quantity one plus two? Andrew. One plus root two. One plus root two is the correct answer. And thank you for not making me say the rest of that question. I appreciate that. Oh, that one's a mouthful, so. <laughs> I made a mistake on that one in practice every single time. So thank you, really. I really do appreciate it. Uh, OK, the score is three to two. Andrew is still ahead. And uh, yep, we're moving on in the round. And our next question is, for all positive integers x, x cubed plus ax squared plus 8x plus 5 is a multiple of x plus 1. What is the value of a? Jack. Four. Four is the correct answer. We have a good one here. Score is tied three to three. Next right answer will win this matchup. All right, moving on. And our next question is, a purple line contains the point negative three, five, and the reflection of that point over the line two x plus three y equals negative one. What is the x coordinate of the point where the purple line intersects the x axis? Express your answer as a common fraction. Andrew. Negative one half. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Jack. One third. That is not the correct answer. Uh, the answer is negative 19 over three. 
All right, score remains tied, three to three. Yeah. Next right answer wins the matchup. Moving on to our next question. And that question is, in right triangle ABC, the measure of angle B is 30 degrees and segment AD with D on side BC bisects acute angle BAC. Andrew. One over three. One third is the correct answer. What a tight matchup, what a great show. Nicely done. And that means we are now in the final round of competition. And the winner of this round will be the champion of the 2017 Raytheon Math Counts National Competition. The two students who are competing for this honor are our number three seed, Andrew Kai from Texas, and our number one seed, Luke Robitaille from Texas. Let's give these guys a huge round of applause. Right, so, you know, you guys are on the same team. You guys probably practice all the time against each other, right? Yeah. So I just want to make it clear, if you get one wrong, you do not have to plank on stage. <laughs> all right, we're good there? All right. Well, gentlemen, good luck. We are going to move, oh, I'm sorry, you know what? Andrew, let me have you test your buzzer, make sure we're good there. Yes, Luke, let me have you test yours. Great, we are ready to go with the first question of the finals. And our first question is, the digital root of a non-negative integer, Luke. Nine. Nine is the correct answer. <laughs> Luke takes a one nothing lead over Andrew. And we move on to the second question of our finals. And the second question is, the length of a 45 degree arc on circle P has the same length as a Luke. One half. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. The length of a 45 degree arc on circle P has the same length as a 60 degree arc on circle Q. What is the ratio of the area of circle P to the area of circle Q? Express your answer as a common fraction. Andrew. 16 over nine. 16 over nine is the correct answer. Right. Excellent. Score is tied one to one. And we move on to the next question of the finals. And our question is, if x satisfies four to the x plus five to the x equals six. Luke. Two. Two is the correct answer. Luke has a two to one lead. As we move on to the next question in our finals. And our next question is, the novel, Cat Lawyer, is 300 pages long and averages 240 words per page. The sequel to Cat Lawyer, Probable Clause, is 60 pages longer and averages 30 more words per page. In terms of the total number of words, by what percent is Probable Clause longer than Cat Lawyer? Andrew. 35. 35 is the correct answer. And I'm going to assume that cat lawyer was a Pikachu cat, so, because those are awesome. Um, all right, score is two to two. You guys are doing great. And we move on to the next question in our finals. And our next question is, Ian starts climbing a set of stairs. Each time he takes a step, he decides randomly whether to go up one, two, or three steps. What is the probability that Ian sets foot on the fourth step above his starting position on his way up the stairs? Express your answer as a common fraction. Luke. 41 over 81. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. 10 seconds. Andrew. 37 over 81. 37 over 81 is the correct answer. All right, so Andrew leads three to two over Luke. 
as we move on to the next question in our matchup. And our next question is, how many six-digit positive integers are divisible by 1,000 but not by 400? Luke. 450. 450 is the correct answer. Wow. Wow. Very evenly matched. Tie score, three to three. Next right answer wins the finals. You know, I just want to remind you guys, you're both in seventh grade. So you know what? <laughs> just come back and do it again next year. No pressure, right? This is just for fun. You guys are both amazing. Uh, so have fun and enjoy the next question of our finals. And that next question is, in a barn, 100 chicks sit peacefully in a circle. So, Luke. 25. 25 is the correct answer. I love it. 